Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming to my channel and clicking on this video. Today we're going to be talking about something spooky. We're talking about the spook light. So I don't think that it gets any spookier than that. And I do have some stories for you because I have seen the spook light and we're going to get right into it. So, the spook light is often referred to as the Joplin or the Hornet spook light. Joplin, Missouri is my hometown. That is where I am born and raised in, but I don't live there anymore. Um, I do kind of miss going to the spook light and, like, having that, like, experience of waiting and waiting and like hoping to see the spook light because it's just a fun thing to do when you're bored and you don't have anything to do in a town like Joplin because there's literally nothing to do there. So, you know, it's just something that you do on your Saturday or your Friday night, you know, so it's something that you miss but you're just not willing to go back to your hometown for but maybe you do it on vacation if you visit the family so anyway uh i do have some information about the spook light it was first spotted by native americans in 1881 along the trail of tears and that's why it is connected with so many legends to Native Americans, like, there are a lot of legends about the spook light, and they connect the spook light to spirits of Native American Indians, so, so yeah, that's a lot of where the legends come from. Um, it's been described as a ball of fire, but it has also taken on many different colors of the rainbow and it even changes colors right in front of eyewitness eyewitnesses so it's not ever just one color but i think its main color seems to be that ball of fire type look just looks like a big old miniature sun so and it's very bright usually the spook light has been investigated by scientists, it's been investigated by the Army Corps of Engineers, and it's been investigated by numerous paranormal investigators. Um, there used to be a spook light museum, and people, like, there was, like, a whole, like, organized thing where uh, tourist buses used to take loads of people out to see it at a time and I don't know how long these little tours would last but they would bring out like a busload of people and they would stay for a while and hopefully they would catch a glimpse of the spook light and then they would bring another load of people out and vice versa but I did hear something about the Spook Light Museum. I don't know if this was not connected or connected to the tourist buses, but there was something that I read about the Spook Light Museum about looking through a hole in the wall where you would look outside through this like little hole in the wall like that to like view the Spook Light, and I'm not exactly sure how that ended up. And apparently, you were supposed to be able to be protected by the rain because you were inside, but... I don't know, what I read was, like, really weirdly worded, so... I'm not sure how true that part is about the looking through the hole in the wall. But that part I did read was supposed to be, like, very tourist trappy, so there's that but the rest of it like the tourist buses like that was like all a real thing and like i guess missouri like made some money off of it and uh so yeah 
But the location of the spook light is actually on the border of Oklahoma and Missouri. So it's often called like not just like the Joplin spook light with like the Hornet because it's like Hornet Oklahoma slash Hornet Missouri. So it's often called like the Hornet or Joplin spook light and it'll be called the Oklahoma spook light or the Missouri spook light. It's got many, many names. So if you're from the area or you know, you're somewhat local, you've probably heard of the Hornet spook light or the Joplin spook light. It's the spook light is usually spotted between 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. And it's located off of Route 66 between the roads E40 and E60, most commonly on the road E50. And that's called Spooklight Road. For those who are most familiar with it, they'll know. And um, usually most prominently spotted on the Devil's Promenade, which is a location that gets confused with a lot of people. Some say it is this like area where there's a slight bridge that connects to another road. I'm, I forget which road that is now because it's been forever since I've been out there. It's either E50 or E60 or one of those E roads. But um, it connects you to another road that you can see this book light on because it doesn't just appear on one singular road. It can appear in multiple areas of that location. And um, the Devil's Promenade is just an area of the road and it all kind of looks the same honestly so like you can pretty much just call any area that is out there the devil's promenade but there's some people out there that are probably going to get mad that i said that because they're going to be like no it's specifically this area so excuse me for getting it wrong but i've never actually found the devil's promenade but that does have a legend behind it i don't remember what it is because I couldn't find it online. But something about walking across it like three times and saying something and... You know, everybody knows those legends, but I can't remember it. So, legends about the spook light are that there are two Native American lovers who are looking for each other. Um, the reason why there's two is because the spook light actually appears in two balls of light at a time in a lot of cases and people will see them kind of dancing around each other and like bouncing around and kind of just like commingling in a weird way so some people say it's two lovers native american lovers looking for each other and it's weird because sometimes they'll like go into each other and like sometimes it's like weird because sometimes it'll show up as a ball and then it separates and then like does a little dance and then it'll like swirl around each other and then like go back in and like disappear it's really interesting like i've seen it do that before and it's it's really like an amazing experience and totally, like, weird. It's, like, mind-boggling how you see this happen. Um, another les le lesson, another lesson to be learned. No, another uh, legend is that it could be a an Osage chief who was decapitated and his soul is not put to rest. So he's, like, an angered spirit who wanders the roads out in this area and his soul has just never been put to rest because he's looking for his head so there's that one and then there's another one that there is a quapa woman who drowned herself in the river because the warrior that she left died in battle and it's her spirit that is grieving and and never move on. So she's out 
haunting the area. And then the last one that I was able to find is a legend of a miner who is using his lantern to search for his children that were um, stolen by Native Americans in the area. And that one's like the one of the oldest ones that I was able to find. So that one's kind of like, I don't know, that one just doesn't fit because like it never looks like a lantern to me. Like it's way brighter than that whenever I've seen it. Or it's way, like, more intelligent looking when I've seen it. Because, like I said, it, like, dances around weird. So, the explanations behind the spook light that I have heard are swamp gases, natural gas, um, rotting natural items in the area that are producing, like, other gases or... Causing some kind of something. Um, but none of these have reduced, produced any positive, like, consensus as to what it is. There's also, like, headlights, radio towers, street lights. But there's not a lot of street lights in the area. The car headlights are not usually coming toward you and usually people think that it's a car headlight but it turns into something else and then they realize it's not a headlight and then the most popular theory is that which can't really be proven is that it's the tectonic plates in the earth's core like not the core, but you know what I mean. In the ground. And they're shifting. And it's causing electric currents in the earth. Which then causes a ball of electricity in the... Uh... You know... In our atmosphere. I'm really terrible at explaining things. So... That's one of the most popular theories, is that that's what's going on. So, okay, so now I've got some stories for you about the spook light. Um, the first one is pretty funny to me. It's a story my mom told me about when she was little. Um, so, this story is about my mom and her family. They went to see the spook light. My mom was about eight years old. So, way before I even was a thought in my mom's head. So, my mom is with her family and the kids in the back seat, and they're sitting in the station wagon, and uh, the spook light actually appears, and it's a ways up the road, and my mom says, Oh, hey, Dad, I gotta go pee. So he's like, okay, hold on a second. Because he's like watching the spook light. And he's like amazed. And the spook light starts getting closer and closer. And she's like, dad, I really got to go pee. And he's like, okay, well, just keep holding on for a second. He's still like engrossed in the spook light. So the spook light gets closer. And it gets on the hood of the car. And my mom's like, dad, I really got to pee. And he's like, okay, hold on a second. Because he's like, still just amazed. And they're watching the spook light and it's like right on the hood of their car. And it's just like this big ball. And it's doing its thing. And then somebody, like, one of the kids gets scared and they blurt something out. And it like, just zooms off of their their car and like goes off and it's gone and her dad says all right if you gotta go pee you can get out and go now and she's like it's okay i don't have to go anymore because <laughs> it's scared of the pee out of her i guess so i like that story i think it's funny <laughs> and then 
I have another story about me and my mom and my sister going because we used to be obsessed with going to the spook light when we were younger. And my mom hated going. I don't know if it was because of that experience that she had that scared her or if she was just afraid of going with us in the car and because like we didn't have our dad around um because they were divorced like so maybe she was scared something might happen but we were sitting in the car i was in the back seat my sister and my mom were in the front and you know how that works the younger kid always has to sit in the back seat and we were chilling we waited for a long time and we were like convinced we were just not going to see it this night so like finally we we see like a motorcycle headlight in the back and like i turn around and i'm looking at this light but we don't hear an engine we don't hear anything it's like dead quiet out there because it's like farmland there's nothing but like cows but there's no cows anywhere near us there's like just nothing and it's dead silent so i'm like looking at this thing and it's bright like it's brighter than a motorcycle headlight even but i'm still thinking that's what it is and i'm like like do you guys hear anything and then all of a sudden these rocks just start flying up out of the road at our car and my mom like she just turns the car on as fast as she can and she like peels out and like the car like you know like when you're in rocks the car like the wheels like spin like the car is like spinning and we like booked it out of there we just and i stood there and i watched the thing like i didn't take my eyes off of it the whole time like i was just like because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I watched it, like, slowly, like, turn off, like, fade into itself. It didn't, like, just turn off. It didn't, like, go away like this or anything. It just did, did this, like, a candle, like, burning out slowly. And then it just was, it's gone. Like, it just burned out like a candle. It was weird. And I was, like, amazed. Like, I couldn't believe what I saw with my own eyes. Like, and I didn't see anything behind it. I didn't see anything near it. It was just the light. And I was astonished by what I saw. I could not believe my eyes. And, like, to this day, like, I will always remember that. Because that was, like... It wasn't the only time I had seen it, but that was the best time that I had seen it. So, I just won't ever forget it. I did read some stories online about it. I read that there were some people that thought that they were looking at headlights. They went down there and they were like, oh, there's a car coming, that really sucks. But then the headlights, they were coming at them and then they went like this, they went vertical. And then they realized those are no headlights. And that's happened apparently to a lot of people. They'll believe they're looking at headlights and they get disappointed. And then they go vertical. And they realize that those aren't headlights. It's the spook light. And sometimes it'll even have like a third light on top of the other two. And that really like freaks them out. But the third light thing is kind of rare. I haven't heard a lot of stories where the third light actually happens, so that one is pretty cool to me when the, the third light happens. Usually it's like two lights, or just the one, but you never get like the third one, so that is really cool. Another one was that one that I read where they were just like casually like driving down to see the spook light and they stopped and they had just gotten there they turned out their lights because that's one of the things that you do is you're supposed to go out turn out your lights and sit and wait and they had just gotten there and they started already seeing it like far away but then it like zoomed up and like was right on the headlight and or on the headlight on the of their car and just like exploded into this like bright light 
on the hood of their car and it was like almost blinding and then it just went and it was gone and I thought that story was super interesting I wish I could have seen that sounds like something off of like X-Files like it sounds like how an X-Files episode would start or something to me but like that sounds cool so then there was one more story and that's the one that my mom told me about her uncle he took his date to see the spook light and uh they went to an area where they parked their car and i don't know if he was trying to put the moves on her or if he was legitimately like just taking his date out there to like hang out and see the spook light but they had stopped turned off the lights of their car they waited for a while and the spook light like came up to their car and at first it was just on the hood which apparently it likes to do this and then it like came into their car and like bounced around i guess and then like left and that's kind of incredible like but i don't know how much merit i have on that one because that was a story told from someone else to someone else to me so you know how those go like you never know with those but I can say that I have seen it, it was incredible, and I was speechless at the time, and I just went speechless for another time, because I literally couldn't think of the words to say, so. What do you guys think of the spook light? This spook light is obviously not the only spook light that exists, there are tons of reports of spook lights, and like, other sorts of like lights they call them different things in different areas like there's some in like michigan there's some in like other areas like there's some in arkansas even there's some in north dakota there's some in north carolina oh my goodness there's some like i think every state has some of these like lights that people go and like they look for them so these are not uncommon. They're just not. So, if you guys have one in your area, please, like, let me know about it down below. I'd love to see pictures of them or go to a website and look at them. Um, I just like reading about them and I like looking at pictures and reading stories about them. So, if you have any stories, let it go in the comments below. Or especially if you have stories about the Hornet Spook Light as well. So I really love to read it. So let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you already have, thank you so much for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.